Welcome, everybody, to the NFL Show on the Grueling Truth Sports Network. I'm your host for the NFL Show, Mike Goodpasser. Right now, I'd like to welcome in my co-host, as always, Sam Teets. How you doing, Sam? I'm doing great, Mike. How are you? I'm okay. Um, all right, let's start off. Today, we're going to talk about teams that can kind of make the jump the 49ers did last year from last to at least the playoff berth. And we'll check a little NFL news first, which I don't see a whole lot except for Quinnen Williams, who was arrested for taking a gun to an airport. What do you think about that? I just think it sounds like a bad idea. Now, I read into it. There's like Apparently, he had a permit for Alabama, but not for uh, the New York, New Jersey area. And there's some kind of legal issue in that. I don't entirely understand it because I don't own a gun. But at the same point, Taking a gun to an airport just sounds dumb. So Not if you're going to take it with you on the uh, flight, which you can do. You just have to put it in luggage beforehand. Yeah, apparently there was some kind of issue with how he managed the situation or where he stored it, and it led to his arrest. This could be a minor deal. I don't think this will reverberate into any kind of punishment by the NFL or anything like we'll that. We'll put it like this, buddy. I'm from Indiana, so I can tell you the law on pretty much everything here when it comes to guns. <laughs> and... I can tell you that the law for the TSA is that you may transport unloaded firearms in a locked, hard-sided container as checked baggage only. And I think he was headed to Mexico, so I think it's safe to say he had a reason to take it. You have to declare the firearm and ammunition to the airline when checking your bag at the ticket counter. The container must completely secure the firearm from being accessed. Locked cases that can easily be accessed cannot be opened. Now, I think this is more of he was from Alabama. He was in New York. It doesn't sound like he was trying to carry it on the plane with him because I doubt that he's that stupid because I don't think there's too many people that stupid. But Yeah, I think it's just more a complicated situation where he didn't follow the exact procedures, and that's what resulted in this. All right, so no big deal. I was hoping to get Anthony's opinion on it because he'd probably think that it's only legal if you're a Dallas Cowboy but Anthony couldn't be on today because he said he was tied up. I asked if he was kinky, and he didn't respond. So let's go ahead and look at teams that might possibly be this year's 49ers. Let's start off. What division do you want to start off in? Pick it. Uh, let's go AFC West. All right. We'll start off in the NFC North then. Uh, no, I'm kidding. The AFC West. <laughs> so. I, I think the obvious one here would be the Chargers, right? Even yeah, though I, I, think it's the I don't know that that's true. But go ahead. It, it's very iffy for Los Angeles. Because to me, it all comes down to the quarterback spot. Because we talked about this. Last year, Phelps Rivers hurt that team in a number of games. And they were never really able to get that offense running to the point where it was the year prior to that. So I think it comes down to that quarterback spot. And there are a lot of quarterbacks available both in the draft and through trades to see and trades and stuff. So there's plenty of opportunity here for the Chargers to find a quarterback that could elevate them to a playoff level again. But you also will not have Melvin Gordon either. That's true. But did Melvin Gordon really play that well last year? I mean, he missed. No. He held out into the season. But this is my point. The year before, he played a fair amount. He played well, and they were a good team. Yeah, but it's just, it's just the balance. I don't know. They have to figure out their offensive balance again because they had that two years ago, and this past year they definitely didn't have that at all, both in the running game and the passing game. So they're able to figure out what they're doing offensively. I think they can cover for their defense. I think they can be fine down that area. It's just a question of can they figure this out, and I think that will come down a lot to what Anthony Lynn and what that front office is capable of. Yeah, I think the other thing that hurts them is the lack of a home field. Wait, they don't really, let's be honest, people in Los Angeles, they don't really care that the Chargers are coming there. People no, I don't think the people the of Los Angeles really there. cared that the Rams were coming there. No, I mean, saw that in attendance and stuff like that. It was almost always the away teams that basically had home games and they went to Los Angeles. Yeah. It's not, like, it's not this pub that people say it is. It's not. But, all right, I, I don't have anybody out of the AFC West because I think the Chiefs are just going to win the division again. I, I don't think the Raiders are anywhere near being a contender um, unless they make a big signing at quarterback. And the Chargers, the same thing. I think they could possibly be a fringe playoff team, but I really don't expect it. The Denver Broncos 
are mildly interesting to me. What do you think about the Broncos? I think a lot of that comes down to Drew Locke, right? Because yeah. he's going into his second year. He had like one or two decent games in his freshman in his uh, rookie year. We didn't really get to see him play at the level where he was comfortable with the offense yet. So it'll be interesting to see what he does. If he turns out to be a solid player or even a decent quarterback, they could realistically come in second in that division. All right. What about the AFC East? Now, this is, a, this is an interesting one. They got two teams. That I think we count as the lower side, the New York Jets and the Miami Dolphins. I don't think the Jets will figure it out just because they have four offensive linemen heading to free agency, and that never bodes well. Yeah, but none of them were that good I mean, anyways, Dolph- were they? Really? No, not really, which is which is also saying something. They don't think they're going to be able to replace all those guys anyways, though. So it's just going to be another year where they're playing behind a bad offensive line. I don't think that will fix anything. Okay. But so if I had to pick Jets. a team – if I had to pick a team in that division, I'd say the Miami Dolphins are probably in the best spot to win a lot more games next year. Because even with Ron Fitzpatrick this past year, they managed to win five. And we're assuming he's going to be the starter mostly in moving forward for the next year. They have three first-round picks. They've got a bunch of cap space. they got the most cap space in the NFL right now, around $88 million. So they've got plenty of room to make moves this offseason. Yeah, I, I would agree there. They've got so many draft picks that maybe make a couple free agent signings. But you got to hit on most of those draft picks to turn this around. And I do think, as crazy as it sounds, this team overachieved with five wins. They were more of a one- or two-win team than they were a five-win team. So it wouldn't surprise me that they're actually better this year, but still around the four- to six-win mark. And then you see the year after that, this team really make their push. Yeah, you got to wait until some of those draft picks have a year to develop, and then you got to see what you can get out of them realistically. Because if you if you whiff on even two of those first-round draft picks, I don't see this team becoming anything more than what they are right oh, now. Oh, if you whiff on one of them, you're probably in trouble, at least for the immediate time being, because they got a lot of stuff they need. All right, let's move to the AFC South. I'm going to be AFC? honest, in the AFC South, I don't, I don't see a team – in the AFC South, I think could will. Actually, no, those Colts are there. The Colts are seven and nine last year. I think the Colts could do a lot this offseason because they do have about eighty-six million in cap space. Uh, they don't have great first. They don't have a great first round pick, but they've got a solid spot to pick in right around the middle of the first round. I think they could do things. They just really relies on what they can do with solidifying that defense because they have a lot of holes, especially in that secondary, and they might want to upgrade their quarterback spot. Yeah, well, I think they're going to have to. Um, I think this is – I don't know because you could just put all four of these teams in a hat and just draw one out and probably get as good a chance as anything. So I, I, I don't really see anything here. What about the AOC North? Because I think the AOC North, we've got Baltimore, who I think is going to drop off because I don't think they were as good as their record last year. You've got Pittsburgh, who gets Big Ben back. So does Big Ben make that big of a difference for them? And you've got Cleveland. They're Cleveland, so we already know what happens there. And then you get the Bengals, who could possibly pick up Joe Burrow. Well, obviously in this situation, you got the Bengals going to draft Joe Burrow, and then they're going to go win the Super Bowl, right, Mike? That's exactly what's going to happen. I'm pretty sure that that will happen. I just don't know if it'll be the first year or the second year. <laughs> yeah, you got you got Cincinnati, who I like moving forward, but not immediately this season. So they got still got to build around Joe Burrow a little bit once they draft him. For Pittsburgh, I really don't know. For me, this division comes down to a toss up between Pittsburgh and Baltimore. I don't think the Steelers get drastically better by adding Ben back. I mean, they'll obviously be better, but I don't know what Ben's going to look like first off. And secondly, I think there's a lot more flaws in that offense than just quarterbacks. I think yeah. we'll definitely see that when Ben comes back. Yeah, I think you've got average running backs and average wide receivers. Yeah, there's no real sound. It's not like when you had Le'Veon Bell and Antonio Brown, you had two of the best players in their given positions. That's not the case at all right now. Yeah, and the other thing is this. When you think about the 49ers, it wasn't just that Garoppolo was gone. It was that the 49ers were able to find like five players who made significant, meaningful contributions in 2019. And, you know, you had Bosa. Debo, um, Mitch Wishanowski, uh, Drew Greenlaw, 
Justin School or Skull, however the hell you say that. So there was a lot of guys there to put them over the hump. I don't see that happen with Pittsburgh where they draft. In Pittsburgh, the defense is really good. I just it, it would surprise me if Big Ben could play a full season, and if he can't, this team's still going to be stuck where they are. Um, with Cincinnati, I think this: if they re-sign AJ Green, and AJ Green still has something left, when you've got AJ Green, Tyler Boyd, um, jo- Joe Mixon in the backfield, that's the start of something. You're going to have basically two first-round picks this year. Because Jonah Williams, who was picked with, what, the ninth pick last year, is going to be healthy to play. At least it looks like he will be. You pick up Joe Burrow. So right there, offensively, your office just got a lot better. The problem with the Bengals is in the secondary and the linebackers. And I I think this, if the Bengals were to come out and surprise people by actually signing some real players in free agency the first couple days, I think this is a team that you could see challenge the Ravens in that division. But it's the Bengals, and I don't expect that to happen. Now, if you want to say most improved team, well, it's a good chance it's the Bengals because they'll have Joe Burrow, and let's face it, they won two games last year, so it's not that hard to significantly improve off of that because if you double your wins, you're at four. So, I'm I'm looking for Cleveland to move back into the basement. Well, yeah, because that's where Cleveland belongs. Because, let's face it, Cleveland Browns fans aren't the brightest people around. And if they were, they wouldn't be Cleveland Browns fans. <laughs> well, I mean, come on. The last time they no, played, I'm not, I'm not the last time they played for a championship, I know, but I wanted to keep ragging on them, so just play along. <laughs> so, like, the last time they played for an NFL title was 1965. Now, I'm 51 years old, and that was three years before I was even born. You know, at least as a Bengals fan, I'm 51 years old, and I've seen my team blow a Super Bowl in the last seconds twice. So I've always got that. Now, when we look at these teams in the AFC, is there any team you think could possibly pull a 49ers and all of a sudden we could see them in the Super Bowl next year? Uh, of this other of group of teams that are in the AFC right now, the one I think that could possibly pull it off would be Indianapolis just because they have so much money and they have a solid offensive line. So I think you could see them do that. I don't expect them to. I think Indianapolis might take a year or two to actually get to that point again. And by that point, I don't know how the offensive line is looking. I don't think they'll be fully back to themselves this next coming year. But I think Indianapolis is the team that's the most ready to take a springboard and go forward. Yeah, so you got to go after Tom Brady. You put Tom Brady with that team, they could go to the Super Bowl. Oh, absolutely. You put a quarterback like Brady there. I mean, it's just an entirely different level of play at that point. Yeah, and it's not a risk like it is to do it in most other places with Brady. You know, it's a risk to do it in San Francisco. And in Indianapolis, what do you got to lose? I mean, exactly. Joe, you could protect your backup, but let's face it here. Jacoby Brissett can be like a game manager, but I'm not taking him much more than that. So if you're playing with Brissett, you might go 8-8. Eight and eight. Maybe you win nine games and get a wild card. I don't see you actually going in and competing for a championship. All right, let's go to the NFC. You want to start off with the NFC West. Are the Cardinals built to do anything quickly? I really don't believe the Cardinals are built to win right now. No, I not mean, unless Kurt Warner comes out of retirement. I mean, pretty much, right? I mean, look at their defense. The defense is terrible. The defense has holes all over the place, with the exception of Chandler Jones and the aging Patrick Peterson. Everything else in that defense needs basically to be redone. And even on the offense, the offensive line's no good, really. They don't have a tight end. Your best wide receiver is Larry Fitzgerald, and he's, what, 36, 37 years old? They've got issues on this team right now, and they're nowhere near close to competing, in my opinion. Yeah, and I don't think the Rams are a team that can turn this around either. I think the Rams are a sinking ship, and they can only go down from here at this point. Yeah, I think you might see one more year hanging out around 500, and then the ship goes down with Sean McVay leading it. Um, let's go AFC or NFC South, which I know I still am going to bring up the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. 
Yeah, Tampa Bay is an interesting situation because we talked about them. And we actually talked about the other day. What if, like, Tom Brady went to Tampa Bay? And cause that's a low-risk situation for him. He doesn't really have many expectations if he does that. What's well, low-risk for, for Tampa, Tampa Bay, Bay, too? I... It's not like you're giving up something great to do that. Except well, yeah, a exactly. lot of money. You're, not, you're, not, you're giving up money, but you're not pursuing Jameis Winston, which might be a win for you. You don't want to take Jameis Winston back, necessarily. But... You look at the offensive weapons, and that's really the draw of Tampa Bay. you got the two receivers and Chris Godwin and Mike Evans. O.J. Howard, who I think is a good tight end, I just didn't think he fit in the way they were using him last year. And then the defense is still pretty good, assuming you bring back Shaquille Barrett. Well, the so front seven's that's... good. you still got to fix the back well, side. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, the secondary needs a little help, especially at safety. And you need at least one, one real good corner in there, because you don't have one right now. So there are holes in this team, but there is a fun. There is like a fundamental base to what they can build on at this point. Yeah, so I think it's just according to what they do quarterback wise, and even if it's Jameis Winston, I would give him a chance because I, I think the Saints are going to drop off. You can only get so close for so long before finally you fall off the cliff. And I'll tell you this: when I look at it, I mean, if it's not Tampa Bay, I think it'll be Atlanta. <coughs> Yeah, but I the, like the Falcons. The Falcons still. Quinn worries still me Matt though. Ryan still got a lot. Yeah. Go ahead. <clears throat> I, I was choking to death, but I, I think the the Falcons have the ability there. I I just don't know if they can get this done with Quinn as the coach. Yeah, I mean, the, guy, the guy's got an amazing haircut and a badass goatee, but other than that. I just don't know if he's got anything else. Yeah, cause this is that, we're at a point with Dan Quinn where it's kind of like if you were going to do it, if you're going to really take this team and get them back to where they're competing at a high level, I feel like that would have happened by now. And it hasn't. We talked about him almost getting fired midway through the year last year. I thought, honestly, he probably should have been fired about the same time as Ron Rivera. Uh, they kept him on. He's going to have another season to try this again. And I think you still, as long as you have Matt Ryan and Julio Jones, you have a chance, in my opinion, as long as you got those two guys together. You also have Calvin Ridley, so you've got offensive weapons. But for me, your defensive line is a little worse. Grady Jarrett's good, but you got no pass rush. It looks like they're going to move on for Devontae Freeman, which means you have no running game. Austin Hooper at tight ends a free agent. So there are a bunch of holes opening up on this team. Yeah. So I think the Falcons are screwed. I think the Saints either get by win this division at 10-6, and six, or we see Tampa Bay make some moves and pull it off. But I, I think Dan Quinn's days are numbered there. NFC East. I mean, pretty much every one of these teams was not very good last year. So almost any of the four could be a surprise team just because they all sucked. But the Eagles were the division winner. Do you see the Redskins, Giants, or Cowboys making any dramatic moves? Well, I think the Giants have a lot of way to go up. The Giants have some cap space to play with about $73, $74 million. Do you expect them to actually make some moves in free agency this offseason? I just hope they make the right ones because the Giants are an organization right now that I think could make the wrong decisions and end up shooting themselves in the foot and and just get stuck in mediocrity for another three or four years. Washington's Washington. Even with Ron Rivera there, the owner still got a lot of control in Dan Snyder. And I think they're going to make basically the same moves they've always been making, and they're not going to get much better. But I think if a team makes moves, it's probably going to be the Giants. All right. So this is my money shot. My money shot's the Detroit Lions. Last year at this time, it was the 49ers. So don't mock me until the season is done. But I think there's a huge similarity here between the Lions and Niners. And I'll give you the similarities. Number one, Matt Stafford. They played most of their year without the starting quarterback. Uh, defensively, they didn't get hardly any interceptions, just like the Niners. Um, and, and I think similarity, they have an X's and O's genius on the staff. Now, I don't know if Patricia is a great head coach, but I think the same thing with Shanahan. I don't think he's a great coach, but I think he's brilliant offensively. I think Patricia is too. And I, I think what we've seen with Patricia is in 2018 against the Rams, he ran a 6-1, a 6-1 front, which was a move that the Bears and the Patriots used with better personnel and shut down McVay's offense. This season, he altered the game plan against the Chiefs to play more man coverage and try to win with four-man rushes. And while the Chiefs scored 27 points, it was only 27 points, 
And then a week or two later, DeColt used the exact same philosophy to upset Kansas City. So I, I think defensively, I think he is very creative. I think he's a good coach on the defensive side. Now, differences is, can they get a Nick Bosa in the draft? With the third pick, you would say no. Chase Young's going second to Washington. But I still think there's a good chance here that – quarterbacks go first two picks if quarterbacks go first two picks they get chase young and then all of a sudden maybe they've got that dominating pass rusher or they can fix with ohio state what's his name odabai or whatever the hell it is come on okuda names okuda so you're gonna upgrade the defense big time you're gonna get a healthy matt stafford who I think was playing as well as he ever had at the start of the season. He played really well the first four or five games until he went out. Um, the defense has got to be upgraded, but I think that Okuda is a worst-case scenario for them, which is a great worst-case scenario. Best-case scenario is they get the pass rusher they need, or they can get that fast-ass linebacker that runs the four three forty. They blew a lot of games late, just like you know the 49ers did. And, I, I mean, I think when I look at this in the NFC or in the entire NFL, I think Detroit is the team most likely to do what San Francisco did. The only thing that worries me is they are Detroit. Oh, yeah, that's, that's the issue. There are certain teams with stigmas about them that can either ward off free agents or just means that forever they're going to be mediocre. I think Detroit – has a good base. He got Matt Stafford, who was playing like a top 10, top 7 quarterback before he got hurt. So we were doing the quarterback rankings, and he was high up there before going down. You've got Kenny Galladay, who's a good receiver. you got Marvin Jones, who scored a bunch of touchdowns last year. So you have offensive weapons. Hopefully, Carryon Johnson gets healthy and stays healthy for a year. And like you said, you're going to get a great defensive player who will come in and almost play at a Pro Bowl level immediately, whether that's Jeffrey Okuda or Chase Young or Isaiah Simmons. So you're going to get someone – with a high-caliber motor who can really play. I think they have a shot to really turn this around. The one thing is they're playing in a somewhat competitive division with the Vikings, the Packers, and the Chicago Bears can screw around and win a game every now and then. Yeah, but how about this? When you look at that division, though, the Bears got Mitch Trubisky. Maybe they move off him. Maybe they go get an Andy Dalton or something. But no matter who they get, not going to be better than Stafford. And when you look at the Packers – when we watched the Packers in the playoffs last year, Sam, there was a lot of holes in that team. And they've still got a lot of holes to fill. And when you look at the Vikings, I mean, that's a team that Matt Stafford, I think, if he's 100%, may be the best quarterback in that division right now. Yeah, because we talked about Aaron Rodgers did not look like the Aaron Rodgers of old, the guy who was winning back-to-back MVPs or whatever, the guy who won multiple MVPs. He didn't look like that. And now, if you're also your Green Bay, you're losing Brian Balaga, who was your starting right tackle, so you're losing some help there. You don't have the offensive weapons you're used to in Green Bay, and the defense isn't really that great either. So you've got issues in Green Bay, and we said they didn't look – I mean, they looked worse than their record was last year. They won 13 games. They didn't look like a 13-win team. That's just the reality. They didn't look that good. And then in Minnesota, it's, it's a situation of underachieving, I think, in Minnesota. So I expected them to do better than they did this past year, and they didn't. And my question is, if you can't perform with Stephon Diggs and Adam Thielen and Dalvin Cook playing well, if you can't perform well and win 12, 13 games that way, then I have no faith that you're going to be able to do it this coming year. And, of course, we talked about Chicago. I mean, Chicago, I feel like they're in the same situation as the Rams at this point, where they're just a sinking ship. They're just going to get worse and worse every year from now until the head coach is fired and you start all over. So there's a chance for Detroit. It's just going to be how they perform within that division that will really decide where they end up. All right. Um, Dak Prescott, any chance that Miami would give up their fifth and 18th pick for Dak Prescott? And w- would the Cowboys take that? If you're Dallas, I think, I think Dallas might take that, honestly, because the Cowboys have not extended Dak Prescott yet, which says something to me. Usually they're very quick to throw money around, but they haven't done that. with. They, did that with, well, they didn't really do that with Zeke. They waited a little bit. 
They did it with Amari. I would expect, didn't they? Yeah, they did. I mean, yeah. yeah, I would expect them just to throw Manning around. I would expect them to sign Dak if they felt confident about him going forward. They haven't done that, so it makes me think they're they're open to moving up from Dak to the right price. My thing with Miami is, are you 100% sure Dak's going to be better than Tua if you can get Tua? Because if you feel you can get yeah, Tua but at I, five, I don't think they're going to get to. I don't think Tua goes to five. I really think Washington is going to take him. Yeah, if you if you're Miami and you know that, then I would absolutely make this trade and try to get Dak Prescott because if you know you're not getting Tua, I mean. Justin Herbert's not really good enough, in my opinion. He doesn't really cut it. If you have the opportunity to trade two picks and get Dak Prescott in that scenario, I mean, that's the best move. Hmm. I probably agree. I, but I, I think the big kicker is I really think Jerry Jones loves Dak Prescott too much and will keep him either way. I just wanted to bring it up because, hey, we weren't at 30 minutes yet. Are we there now? We're close. It's like 27. So, you got any other NFL news you want to bring up? I mean, we could talk about how the Jets beat the Cowboys last year. And the Steelers. Well, we can ignore that part, Mike, all right? We can just stick with the first part, and then let's call it a day. Yes, but Anthony, our resident Cowboy fan, is not here. You're a Steelers fan, so I'd probably rather talk about how the Jets bludgeoned you guys. And that was just a week or two after the Bengals completely throttled the Jets. Yeah, that's true. Okay, because I think there's no doubt that the Bengals are going to be the far superior team to probably any team in NFL history this year once Joe Burrow's on board. <laughs> Joe Burrow will fix everything. Yeah, he will. It's happened before. John Elway fixed everything in Denver. Peyton Manning pitched, picked every, or fixed everything in Indianapolis. Joe Montana fixed everything in San Francisco. Hmm? Yeah, I think I, I think he's that good. I honestly think he could do that. I really believe he could be the savior for this team. All right, so it's settled. Bengals Lions in the Super Bowl. That would be the perfect Super Bowl because the Lions are the one franchise that could lose to the Bengals in the Super Bowl. The Lions or the Cardinals? Pretty much. I mean, that's basically how it goes. And we need an AFC Championship game at the Bengals against the Jets with a divisional playoff game against the Browns. <coughs> Those things happen. Bengals are there. All right, Sam, you want to tell everybody where they can find you? Yeah, you can find me on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram at Sam underscore Keats 33. Plus, plenty of articles out there. I'm constantly tweeting about sports information, so feel free to go check that out. All right, guys, you can follow me at The Grueling Truth. If you want to hear me more today, go at 2.30. We'll have the old-time boxing show with me and former HBO boxing historian Christopher Shelton. Of course, HBO doesn't have boxing no more, so that's why we got him. And we pay him probably ten times what HBO did. <laughs> sure we do. Um, but we will be talking about former WBA heavyweight champion Mike Weaver today at 2.30. Tonight at 9 o'clock, me and Sam McGinnis will be on with the NHL Weekly Show. And then at 11 o'clock tonight, Inside Boxing Daily with Jeremiah Pricer. And guess who? Me! Make sure you check it out. You can also find <laughs> us on Rockfin. It's like $9.99 a month to get the premium content, which we will have coming out shortly. So make sure you check us out there. But for now, for Sam Teets, not for Anthony Savino because he's tied up right now, I'm Mike Goodpaster. You've been listening to The Grueling Truth, where the legends speak.